Hello, it's Guy Gemmer with the 10 things you need to know about buying a house. Number one is the pre-qualification process. The first thing that we do when we're looking at buying a home is get pre-qualified. We wanna make sure that we know how much we can afford, how much the monthly payment's going to be, and that we can actually close. We don't wanna start going to look at houses unless we know those things in advance. So you wanna get connected with a lender, with a mortgage broker, and go through that process. They're gonna be asking you for a few things in that process as well. You're gonna do your mortgage application and they're gonna ask you for your pay stubs, they're gonna ask you for your W-2s, your tax returns, they're gonna ask you for your most recent bank statements, your kindergarten report card, they're gonna, no, they're not gonna ask you for that, but they will ask you for your bank statements and your pay stubs and your tax returns. So you'll need those things. That's gonna give us an idea of what you qualify for, how much of a, uh, a payment you can get into and uh, what type of price point we're looking at when we go home searching, which is step number two. Step, step number two is the house search. And so we'll start driving around neighborhoods looking for for sale signs and no, we don't do that anymore. That's not how we do it. Everything's online now, right? Especially post COVID. So no matter what website you're using, whether it's my website, it's realtor.com, it's homes.com, truly a Zillow, whatever. Whenever you're searching online, you gotta know how much you can search up to so that's part of that pre-qualification process. And then from there, we get to the actual uh, viewing part. And that's step three, looking at houses. So we've done the search online and now we're actually viewing them. So once you've found something, you reach out to me, shoot me a text or an email or give me a call and say, hey guy, we wanna see this house, what do you think? And what I do then is then I reach out to the listing agent, they contact the seller and they schedule a time with us to make sure that we can get in a time that works for both parties. And so that's how the actual home viewing process works. And so that's step three, the viewing. Step four is the contract. So we've been through step one, getting pre-qualified. Step two, we started looking online. Step three, we went and looked at the house and we found the perfect house, right? Then we actually write up the purchase contract. That's step four. And in the contract, we go through all kinds of stuff. It's like 16 pages now. I'm not gonna tell you how short it was when I started, but it wasn't very long. Now it's 16 pages, so there's a lot of stuff in there. And like everything, I like to make videos to explain that. So when I fill out that contract, I'm actually gonna send you a screenshot video that said, hey, this is how this contract works. This is the information that we're putting in there as part of our negotiations going into it. Once we finish that, I send it off to the seller's broker and if they accept our offer or if we have to counter offer back and forth, when we come to a, a, an agreement on that, we've st finished step four. Step five is inspections. And so in step four, in that contract process, we are coming up with dates for our inspections, the type of inspections we're gonna do, uh, who's gonna pay for those inspections, that's all in that process. But step five is the actual inspection process. So in the inspection process, we are going to schedule with an inspector to go out, walk through, check out the house and give us a report. So we can either be there or not be there. It just depends on what our schedules are like, but the inspector is going to provide us with this report that has a summary page that will tell us all of the things that they think need attention. From there, we'll take that summary page and we'll say, these are the things that we want to be repaired, or uh, these are the things that we feel like makes the house not for us. And so we can either object and terminate the contract or object and request repairs to be made on the property that work for us. Now, we go back into negotiations in that process and so the seller may say, no, I'm not gonna fix all of that, but I'll fix this and this. And if we can come to an agreement on that process, then the objection part of our inspection process is complete. We are back under contract and we're moving forward. And that's to our next step. That's step six, which is the appraisal. So the bank actually orders the appraisal and the appraisal is a disinterested third party that goes out to the property walks around, checks out the condition, and then does a market analysis on everything that's sold in the neighborhood, that's similar, and values the property 
so that you can get a loan for the amount that we've agreed to in our contract. Now, the good thing about an appraisal is they represent the bank, but they also represent your interest because they want to make sure that the bank never lends too much money on a house, which means that you'll never pay too much for the house in the first place. So that's the benefit of the appraisal and it's actually helpful for us in the process. Now, because the market can change and fluctuate and houses go up and down, we, we don't always know exactly what an appraiser is thinking. And so it, always, it doesn't always come out exactly the way we want it the very first time, but the benefit to being active in the transaction is that I have the ability to work with the appraiser, find out, with, find out why they came to the valuation that they came to, and work with them to continue to move us forward. So that's step six, the appraisal. Step seven is repairs. And so once we've come to, through all of those six steps and come to the, the appraisal or, or to the repair process, we, are, we aren't any part of that, but we are allowing the seller to begin the repair process. Because there's contingencies around coming to an agreement on what repairs are made, and then that the appraisal is, is going to come in uh, at value and that we can move forward, the seller doesn't typically start repairs until we get that report. And so in that time frame, after we've gotten the appraisal, the, the seller will begin to make those repairs. Then from there, step eight is the final walkthrough. And so at that point, the repairs have been done, we're really close to our closing date, and we get to walk through the property one last time and just make sure that all of the repairs have been done and things are looking good. So we get that opportunity, like I said, just a couple days before closing. From there, you're gonna to have to get your, your cashier's check and your driver's license together in order to take them to closing. And that is step nine, getting the money together for closing. And the money that you're bringing to closing is going to be the exact same number or very similar, very close to that first number from step one that through your pre-qualification process, the lender is telling you, hey, this is a disclosure of what it's gonna cost you to close on the property. This is the amount of money that you're gonna to have to put down in order to purchase it, and this is what you can expect your closing costs to be. It may be a little bit different than that because of the negotiations that we've done on the inspections and the appraisal and things like that, but it's gonna be very close to that. And so step nine, you'll need to get a cashier's check for the closing of the purchase of your property. Now, again, you wanna make sure you have your cashier's check, you wanna make sure you have your driver's licenses because you're gonna need those to close. And then step 10 is the closing. And that's where you'll actually take those things, the cashier's check, you'll take your driver's license, and you'll actually go down to the title company where you'll sign your mortgage documents and your deed. And that is really the most fun. It, it can be laborious for sure. If you've ever bought a car, or financed something in the past, you know that there's a lot of paperwork involved. Imagine doing it for a house. And so there's a little bit of paperwork that happens in this process. It can be laborious, like I said, but that's the final thing for us is the closing. And so once we've closed, the documents are then processed. Uh, they go to the bank and they go to the, um, they go to the county. And then we have what's called a funding and a recording. And so, once the bank has sent the money to the title company and, and forwarded on to the seller, then we'll get, and, and the title gets recorded with the county, then you'll get your keys. Sometimes that happens the same day that we do the closing. Sometimes it happens the day after. It just depends on what time of day we record and how quick the bank works, but that's it. That's the final step, it's closing, and that's step number 10. So one, we had the pre-qualification process. Two, we had searching for the property online. Three, we had viewing the property. Four, the contract. Five, the inspections. Six, the appraisal. Seven, the repairs. Eight, the final walkthrough. Nine, the cashier's check. And 10, the closing. And now you are a home buyer. And those are the 10 things you need to know about the home buying process.